Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. New addition to the shack, or the radio room as I call it. It's a Raykel RA1772, 15 kilohertz to 30 megs. Rather a nice piece of kit. When I got it, only got it yesterday, all sorts of problems. Um, the meter was all over the place. It wasn't the power supply fault because all the voltages, you know, when you turn the meter switch, they're all over the place. It was a dirty switch on the meter. So a quick spray sorted that out. All well, the power supply is fine. There is one problem with the power supply, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, rather nice. Also, the, the frequency readout was all over the place. Again, dirty switches. All these switches were, I mean, they're expensive switches being Rakel, you know, they're not kind of cheap wafer type things, you know, they're not rubbish. They're decent switches, but they were filthy. Bear in mind, this is what, 50 years old? Must be 50 years old. Sort of mid seventies, weren't they these, I suppose? It wasn't only the switches, there were various other problems. Some of the wiring needed sorting out. A couple of the soldered joints had gone bad. Um, I don't know whether they were bad in the third, first place or whatever, but I've uh, resoldered those. Lots of fiddly bits, you know, it wasn't just a case of cleaning switches and it worked. Lots of fiddly bits and pieces to to sort out. Uh, for example, the, the disc here where it reads out the megahertz, that didn't go around properly with the control knob. So it says you're on 5 megs and you're on, I don't know, 13 megs. Next time you come around, it says you're on 5 megs, you're on 15 megs. So there was a lot to sort out. So, lovely piece of kit. When I turn it on, you'll see what the power supply problem is. Hear that buzz? That's the mains transformer. Now that isn't, if I, if I adjust it slightly, move it. There we are. It's not something drawing excessive current. It's just the laminations on the transformer. Probably if I'm bashing it with a hammer, we'd sort it out, but I, I don't think I'll do that. That's a last resort. So that's, it probably just reposition it, tighten it up and things like that will sort out the humming. As I say, it's not excessive current being drawn. So if we tune into something, I've got Radio Guernsey here somewhere. How many advertising agencies are there in the UK? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, well, thankfully, yeah. There we are, that's Radio Guernsey. <laughs> um, on uh, 1116 kilohertz. I always use this as a benchmark of Guernsey. There we are. I'll show you some sideband later. Um, I'll tune into Volmet or something and show you that. So, so far that's it. It's all in one piece. It's all working. Uh, cosmetically, it's not too bad. I've had to give it a bit of a clean up. The, here, the, the megahertz switch, as I call it, I think that's the right description. This little window there goes from 0 to 29. So if you want uh, up to 30 megs, go to 29, then on the kilohertz scale here, which is lovely, look at that. Lovely, isn't it? You've got uh, that set to 29, then you read out here. So it'd be 29.25, whatever and then you go up to 30 megs, so it's 15 kilohertz to 30 megs. And it's very good down on VLF, down on 15 kilohertz. It'll actually tune down and still work on about 11 kilohertz. Below that, everything fades out. You know, it's not designed to go below that. But uh, really sensitive down on VLF, which is good. Just give you a demo on uh, VLF. Listen to that static. That's 30 kcs, sorry, kilohertz. There's all sorts down there, isn't there, VLF? I love it, especially when there's a storm. Brilliant. It's, uh... Then we come up to... Radio 4, BBC Radio 4, 198. But uh, you see how sensitive that is down there. So you'll go down to, that's 19 kilohertz, 14, 
yeah, that's 12, and then fades out below, fades out below about 12 kilohertz. So, as I say, it's uh, designed from 15 kilohertz. It'd be nice if it went down lower, wouldn't it? But it's really good. I've always wanted a decent receiver that'll go down the VLF end, um, as I say, 15 kilohertz. So when there's a decent thunderstorm around, we should have a lot of crashes there. This transformer buzzing is going to be annoying. I'm going to have to fix that because it's really loud. I'm now on, uh, what am I on? 17.49 megs, 17, 17490 kilohertz. And this is children, toys, uh, places they can go. Radio China, I think. <laughs> what did you, how do you feel about the infrastructure in China? So, and malls and parks and elsewhere. I tried this last night on the lower frequency bands seven megs uh, amateur and uh, broadcast of course 7.2 upwards and it's just absolutely jam-packed with stations really lovely i will i'll do a usb uh, volmet recording in a minute the only one thing that people might say oh that's no good it's usb only there's no lower sideband position on the mode switch you've got am usb with the bfo usb on its own so you just use the tuning then you've got isb now isb is independent sideband i have read about it i've got to learn a bit more i've not heard of that so you've got isb u and isb l by the look of it it hasn't got fsk some models had fsk frequency shift keying, which would be useful to me because i look at the um the Ritty weather forecast, things like that on Ritty, and also on uh, the, the weather maps, you know, the charts that come up. And if you're not on FSK, then the frequency readout doesn't read correspondingly to the, the transmission. On the old, uh, I've got my old Kenwood over there, the transceiver, switch to FSK, then the, the published Ritty frequency, for example, for the weather forecast is the dial frequency. If you're just on upper sideband, it's, it's wrong. You still get it, it works, but uh, that's just by the by. So no lower sideband. But that doesn't bother me because I want this mainly for upper sideband things and the broadcast bands and, of course, VLF. Just out of interest, the old Sailor receiver here that does uh, long, medium, short wave and the uh, non-directional beacon band only up to four megs on uh, on HF. That is that's got sideband, but it's upper sideband only again. None of the commercial stuff has lower sideband because only radio amateurs use it. Of course, I think that's correct. I don't know of any commercial outfits that use lower sideband. They're all upper, aren't they? And of course, radio amateurs only use lower on uh, what 160, 80, and 40 meters. The rest of it's upper sideband anyway. So it's only those three bands. Got some photos here for you. There's the front panel. It's not a very good picture, actually. I'll try and get a better picture at some stage. But there are the controls on the front panel. As I say, there were lots of different versions of this. So I'm not sure quite which one I've got as yet. It's either double conversion or triple conversion. I don't know. <laughs> it hasn't got FSK, as I said, but it's got the ISB, independent sideband. There's the back panel. Lots of stuff on the back panel, as you can see there. I've taken a couple more photographs to make it clearer. There's the left-hand side of the back panel, which is uh, which shows you all those bits and pieces there. And uh, over to the right-hand side of the back panel, there's the aerial input socket. It says 50 ohms. The manual says 50 to 75 ohms, so whatever you've got. But very nice, lots of things on the back panel to have a look at. I've discovered something new about independent sideband. I'd never heard of it. This is what it is. An ISB receiver is essentially a dual channel, single sideband receiver. It performs these steps, RF application and mixing, that's fine. The incoming RF signal with both sidebands, all right, is amplified and mixed down to an IF frequency, which we know, that's fine. The IF signal passes through two filters, one for the upper sideband, one for the lower sideband. Each filter isolates 
its respective sideband and rejects the other. OK, so you've got both sidebands coming through. No carrier, of course. Independent detection. Each sideband is then demodulated separately using product detectors or synchronous detectors. Separate audio outputs, right? On the back of the receiver, I've got two line outs, upper sideband and lower sideband audio. These can be sent to two speakers, two recording channels or to whatever different circuits. Now that's interesting. What is the point of that? I did read somewhere, for example, this came from the RAF apparently, the Royal Air Force apparently, allegedly. What they could do is have on, say the upper sideband, have a voice signal and on the lower sideband, perhaps data. And they come into the receiver, right? And they, you've got separate audio outputs for each one or to whatever you want to do. You know, the, the audio output could be uh, some digital thing or something. The other audio output could be voice, phone. So that's interesting. So I've got here ISBL, ISBU, and then it says ISB. I don't know, but perhaps that's both. So I suppose I can resolve side, lower sideband on 160, 80 and 40 metres. What I might do, it's not now, what I might do at some stage is take each line out, USB and LSB on the back, put it into a little stereo amp, left and right channels, two speakers. So I've got Lower sideband in that speaker, upper sideband in that speaker. I don't know. I've learned something. Live and learn, don't you? That's interesting. I've just discovered something else. I'm learning as I go. I should have learned all this and then made the video. Still, we're learning together, aren't we? <laughs> That's the way to look at it. I do things in some sort of peculiar order, as you will know, if you've watched my other videos. I've now discovered, forget fitting a stereo amp to the back and all that, upper sideband is just upper sideband, all right? And the good thing about that is you can tune in, for example, to uh, Volmet 13.264 megs, tune into that here, switch to upper sideband, and that's it. There's no fiddling. There's no trying to resolve it by tuning around and getting it just right. So that's that. The next position is ISB, independent sideband. That is both sidebands. So both come through. So if I'm listening to Volmet on upper and I switch to independent sideband, I'm getting the upper, I still hear Volmet, but I would hear whatever is on the lower sideband if there was anything. I've just been on 40 metres. Conditions are dreadful at the moment, so I'll show you later in the day when it's picked up a bit. Just been on 40 metres. All I've got to do is switch to ISBL for lower, independent sideband lower. So this will receive lower and upper sideband. I should have learned that, shouldn't I, before I made the video, but there we are. So I take back all I said about you can't listen to 160, 80 and 40 meter amateurs on lower sideband because you can, and they come through beautifully. When conditions pick up, as I say, it's, it's early in the morning now. I was awake in the night thinking about this. So, <laughs> and uh, anyway, right, that's it for now. I shall learn a bit more and be back in a minute. I'm now on 8957 kilohertz, 8957, which is Volmet, Shannon. There we are. London Heathrow, Metroport. London Heathrow at 08500. That's pretty good, isn't it? So if I switch to. That's independent upper, independent lower, because they're not transmitting on lower. That's just upper. Now you can have upper sideband with the BFO. So you'd have to adjust the BFO. Okay. I don't know why you've got upper sideband there there's a bit of intermittency on that switch that might want clean a bit more cleaner so i don't know why you'd have upper side band and then with the bfo i don't know 
But there we are. That solved all the sideband problem. But isn't that nice to listen to? You know, no tuning around, no mucking about with it. Anyway, by the way, I'm using my active antenna, mini whip antenna. This turns it on and off. This is a 433 meg thing. Turns a, a switches a relay on and off down in the garden to turn the mini whip on and off. Right, that's fix the switch. Bit of I've run out of that. Let's get some more. That's that done. Um, no memories on this. Let's turn her down. No memories on this. When you switch off, I, th I first thought it was a fault. Switch off, okay. Switch on again. You've got a row of zeros here. Zero kilohertz. So I thought, oh dear. Surely it should remember the frequency I was on. Of course, back then, no. It's got no memories. The, what else was I going to mention? No RF gain control, but there is an IF gain control. And initially I thought, well, if I'll show you. I thought, well, that doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. But if you turn the AGC off, right, then the IF gain comes into play. Okay, that's that. Turn that down. So that's interesting. Um, there are teleprinter connections on the back, but the FSK board is missing from here. So that variation is not this model. This is the independent sideband model. <laughs> I'm getting there. Have I bored you enough with this? Will there be another video you're asking? You know me of old. Come on, you've seen my videos before. What was it I did? Was it this? It was this HRO, wasn't it? Receiver. I think there were six or eight videos in the end. The AR88 over there had videos. The R209 receiver. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure there'll be another video. Right, thanks for watching as always. I shall see you next time. Bye bye for now. 7-3 from the south coast of England.